had small horses in those days. This is the calorifier or hot water tank that's underneath the bed and uh, this is what's given us problems every time we turn the tap on and if my trusty assistant Francis <laughs> there ever ready yeah, here we turns go. the tap on this is what we get we get that clunking noise I didn't even do it then no they did it on its own accord then. yes so if you could turn the tap on again, Francis. So we're getting that. So we are at a boatyard and we're waiting for the chap to come across and uh, have a look for us. And he seems to think that it might be something to do with that valve there with the red cap on. If you turn that red valve, it um, expels water out of that pipe into the canal side. So uh, haven't got a clue what it is. So hopefully our man will come and sort it. Well, it's Sunday again already. Dinner's on the stove. And we've got sausage, tomato and bean casserole. Which we're going to have with roast potatoes again. And uh, we're going to kick back this afternoon and watch a film. And this is our home cinema system. So it's the laptop plugged into a Bluetooth speaker. I always plug it in with the wire because the synchronization between the, the computer and the sound just uh, is always a half a second out and it's so annoying. And that's the film we're going to watch, Sylvia, about Sylvia Plath the poet. Can't imagine for one minute it's going to be a cheerful affair as she committed suicide. But uh, got that from a charity shop, didn't we, not long ago for a pound. And why are we watching it, Fran? Because I, this morning, didn't get dressed until 11 o'clock because I was finishing the book, the only novel written by Sylvia Plath. Yeah. And um, I was quite intrigued. It's supposed to be part biography and it was really insightful and quite moving. So having realised that we've got that DVD on the shelf after I haven't finished the book, I thought we'd um, watch it. So. And what are we needing now? Oh, just a bit of bread. Because it didn't make it overnight, and um, while the fires are light during the day, it's just easier to do it during the day. So. Okay. And uh, oh, where's the book? I was going to show them the book, Sylvia Plath oh, book. Tumty tum. Oh, here she come. And this is the book. We struggle a little bit with books because. When we first got the boat, we did say that books would have to be one of our pleasures that we wouldn't have so many of, that we'd use the Kindle, or we'd just go and buy one or two books from a charity shop, and when we read them, they'll go back. But we've both got a huge weakness for books, and it just seems that whenever we go into a town or a village, we, we are drawn to bookshops or charity shops and end up buying more books. So we're struggling a little bit with storage for them. They're all over the place, but that's not a bad thing, is it? Yeah, that's the okay. thing is with charity shops, you can never get what you want. You know, you have to you have to choose what they've got, which yeah. isn't always. Yeah, helpful. and sometimes when it's a hardback book, we don't like getting rid of them. So these have to go back to the house when we go back. Now we'll leave them on the yeah. bookshelves at the house. <laughs> and what we do is we take five books back and bring take five books back to the house and bring ten back here. <laughs>
come across this before. This looks like they're looks like they're pumping water from the River Tone into the canal. Afternoon, it's another Sunday. Um, thank you all so much for all the comments regarding our water issues and water pump and uh, perhaps possible leaking leakages. Uh, comments have just been fantastic and uh, we try and get round to answering everybody. Uh, but um, if we've missed you out, apologies, don't stop commenting because we'll get you next time maybe. We do try and get round everybody and some um, comments have actually been going into some spam folder somewhere so yeah, we don't always see them In, until a week later if we I don't know. look so. Um, but as you say, please keep them coming anyway. So we have got the uh, pump sorted for the water uh, and we've had a new pump fitted and it's so quiet isn't it? Yes, yeah, originally the guy originally thought it was the valve on the calor calorifier, <laughs> which is um, what some people said. Um, and he changed that and it wasn't, and then he changed the pump um, and it was fine. But we also found that we had no air in the accumulator as well. So um, that's been adjusted and the accumulator, as far as I understand, it's just a reservoir that holds the pressurised water mm. Every time we were turning on a tap before, even for a dribble, because the accumulator wasn't working, the pump was switching in, and that meant the calorifier was pumping out hot water into the outside. So we were obviously running out of hot water much really more quickly. quickly than we should have done. So the whole lot was linked. Um, and although, as I said before, we were going to fix the water pump or change it ourselves originally, when it came down to it, we wouldn't have had the right tools and the right temperament, I don't think, to do it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was. Yeah, uh, I just um, went off on one then. I just uh, <laughs> was miles away. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> 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 I'm doing it all again. I know, I know. I was listening. It is Sunday. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> You're allowed to drift away on a Sunday. So, um, we are close to Stoke Bruin. Um, and we've got the Blisworth Tunnel coming up, which is a mile and three quarters of tunnel, which will be fun. We were really looking forward to going to the Canal Museum at Stoke yeah. Bruin, but it would appear in true Fran and Rich fashion, yeah. because this happens, happens to, to us all the time. It's closed for six weeks. <laughs> And it just happens to be while we're here. It opens in about three weeks' time. Oh, it's and we'll like be later on that, February the 16th, I think it opens. So, so. yeah, we'll be way gone. <laughs> so hopefully, I mean, we really wanted to go there because I, I remember going there in about 1975 with my mum. And uh, she bought a little uh, glass ashtray with, with the museum and buildings on it, uh, which I've still got. So I'd love to have gone in there again and had another look, but... Never mind, another time. But I'm sure there are other museums, canal-based, around the country. What you really wanted was to go in there and for me to buy you a present. I am due a present there, yes. And it's sweeties. It's been, been, <laughs> been a long time since Christmas. So um, we got this Blisworth Tunnel to get through. As I said, it's a mile and three quarters. It's the longest tunnel we've ever been through. And it's the third longest in the country. And the longest wide tunnel for a wide beam boats to get through. So it's going to be fun isn't it? Mm -hmm. This will take about 35-40 minutes to get through. This is how we receive our internet with this little gadget here. It uh, connects to the 4G signal and somehow or other that converts that to Wi-Fi that you can use for all your uh, phones, laptops and tablets etc. As you can see we've got uh, just one level of signal here it can go you can go up to five it's fluctuating there between one and two and that is fine that that's enough for us to stream films stream music watch TV if we need to on the laptops or tablets etc 
and uh, we, when we took out the contract with EE, they sent us this that uh, needs a 240 volt plug-in and uh, so you have to switch on the inverter for it to work which means you're draining the battery uh, really quick uh, I'm, I'm sure there is a, a 12 volt converter you can buy for it but we don't need to this was given to us by Fran's son and it works a treat and we're really pleased with it and uh, it's very rare that we uh, don't have a signal and I think the last time we didn't have a signal was when we were in London crazily enough but yeah works a treat but I just wanted to say something about Sundays on the boat and um, boat time um, we're for the first time really now in a position where we don't need to be anywhere on a particular day and going anywhere today we were going to travel and try and get through the tunnel but when we woke up it was windy and I was reading my book <laughs> so we just decided we don't have to travel we'll stay put um, and people seem to think that it's it is an easy life and they seem to think that it's completely without pressures but we still do find that there's chores to be done every day really there's stuff to be done on the engine there's particular cleaning stuff to be done and maintenance on the boat and also because we're trying to manage the holiday cottage I have an enormous amount of organising to do with that and phoning up and management and, and it all takes time maintaining really. its pros maintaining its presence on the web as well yeah you have to do, don't you? so we've sort of i think it's happened naturally that we've tried to make weekends and particularly sundays a time when no chores take place edna the washing machine doesn't get used um and there's no, no like engine unless there's something desperate there's no engine maintenance outside cleaning of the boat anything like that and we try and have some days it's a really relaxing day whatever we want to do mm. just to otherwise you lose time you lose you lose every day becomes the, day the same the week. doesn't it yeah um and it's really nice to have a day that's a little bit different jobs that you don't want to do we don't you do don't them on do a sunday we don't have to so just wanted just, to say a uh, bit about that really we've been for a i don't know what is it four mile round trip to to yeah. the shop local shop yeah uh, to get some stuff and uh, gave the dogs a walk, they really enjoyed that and they're flaked out now except for Jessie's doing a bit of hoovering than what she's picking up. Sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds <laughs> on the floor. And uh, hopefully we've got enough power now. We can watch the film as you said bef before, didn't yeah. you? And uh, just chill out. Just chill out. So here we are at the bottom lock at Stoke Brewer. Uh, it's the pumping station dating from 1939 and uh, water is pumped from here to the top pound by the uh, museum, waterways museum apparently. And uh, days of old this would have been a really busy bustling wharf and the reason the towpath here is so wide is there used to be a tramway going from this bottom lock where they used to unload boats, put it on tram, take the uh, goods over the top of what is now Blisworth Tunnel because for five years from 1800 they um, were digging out the tunnel uh, so they used to carry the goods over the top into another boat and then move the goods further north so it's really interesting, really iconic boating landscape this. It's uh, lovely to see and I just adore it. Really fab. So, uh, come down and to find yes, Fran. Cook, what are you cooking, Fran? Sausage rolls for lunch. Sausage rolls. So, we Did had a bit of a disaster because I didn't have a wine bottle 
rolling pin, but I did have a bottle of beer. <coughs> Having said that, I didn't drink it, it was empty. We did drink it a couple of days ago, so never be without a bottle on a boat. <laughs> so, I look forward so to Linda that. McCartney, I don't know if I'm allowed to mention names, vegetarian sausages. If you want a pastry recipe, look up Narrowboat Chefs, just done pastry recipe. Oh, Narrowboat Chef, yeah. So I won't have to go into that. So that's a good... Did they do a recipe for pastry, did they? Yeah, she did pastry. Or he'd, I think she did the pastry. Um, so put anything you want in it. If you want to put cheese and onion in it, or leeks, or... But you can't beat a sausage roll, can you? Really? You can't. Anyway, I was just Sorry. saying outside how excited I am about getting into the centre, the hinterland of the canal system now. And this, these, this, the architecture has suddenly changed. It looks different out there. It's really it does, yeah. a bit of industry, industrial uh, canal architecture coming up. And, and there's uh, been a few more weirs and stuff on the side of the canals, yeah, isn't there? And interesting yeah. banks. Can you have an interesting canal bank? You can have an interesting <laughs> canal bank. Anywhere you well, are is I, an interesting canal bank. Is it? <laughs> well, I thought I'd come in and just point out again on the map exactly where we are. Um, oh, well, I need some specs. Hang on. No good without specs. Right, so here we are. So we are just here, just below Stoke Bruin. And there's Northampton. Uh, we've got seven locks to get through today. So we really are now getting a pace away from London, heading into the Midlands and uh, looking forward to it. And I think we might have made a decision about which way north we're going. Halfway? So, uh, well, we're going to try and get in that boat yard, aren't we, to get the boat oh, out for the yes, spring. So that's uh, more news about that. A little tease. <laughs> so yeah, there we are and heading up north. Can't wait. Well, I guess that means Northamptonshire County Council. It's, uh, concrete 1970s, maybe, 60s. Looks a bit Stalin-esque. Anyway, we're halfway up the flight. We've had our sausage rolls and soup.